What's up guys, Ben here, bringing you another video today. Uh, today, I wanna do my kind of pre-season, I guess the season already started, I'm recording this Saturday morning, my early season predictions on awards, who's gonna win the first major, who's gonna get changed, blah and blah and blah. So I want to take a look at the CDO Intel tweet. We're also gonna take a look at the Breaking Point Coaches poll for this conversation, so let's dive in. All right, so we're going to talk about this tweet. I'm going to give you my answers for all of this, but I wanna quickly kind of address the Breaking Point because I think it touches on some of this and I want to give you kind of my thoughts on that. So this came out uh, late on Thursday, I believe. I think late on Thursday, 625 December 7th. Yeah, so late on Thursday. Uh, and you can already tell if you've already seen day one and I'm sure by the time this video goes up, some of the matches on day two will have already been played like it, this ranking is close, but probably not spot on to where things are going net. Look, there's always going to be crazy upsets and results week one and probably week two of the league. And these will get way more accurate as the season kind of goes on. You have a body of matches and nothing can really replicate in scrim sort of the intensity and the pacing that happens sometimes in matches. But there's already a couple of surprises. Um, and there are a couple of teams that I think we thought in this list, like uh, say Seattle might come out like pretty hot, have. I just want to put a pin in the breaking point thing and let's have a conversation on Monday when I do my first kind of season in season tier list and we can kind of circle back on this but i think going to some of the sort of award conversation let's dive in the so first off rookie of the year so i think from my end um i actually think that this sort of trio here is kind of pretty close uh it seems that the coaches and again this poll is i believe uh, uh all 12 coaching staffs do get to vote so i don't know if that includes like a uh, one analyst one coach from each team like i don't know how the point scoring works but it looks like not every coach uh answered uh this part of the poll, uh, Abuza had uh, three votes. Snoopy and Lince each had two. Now you might say, Ben, does Snoopy really count as a rookie? Well, Ben Spence from the league kind of addressed this over the summer and said because Snoopy had only played a couple of matches at champs that he still technically qualifies as a rookie. And if we're going to make analogies to like other esports and sports, this kind of lines up with what uh, those have done. I think the other player uh, players that may kind of slide in this conversation are players like Estriol, and Flames, who just got picked up as the LEG sub. Gwyn's another player who might kind of slide into uh, this uh, conversation as well. So for me, I think if I was gonna make a prediction, I think it's probably gonna end up being either Abuza or Snoopy. And I would say if I would make a, I have to put a gun to my head and make a decision right now. I think I'm going to say Abuza for uh, rookie of the year. But as always, someone get picked up mid season and we, you know, this could just be, it's not something we contemplated, someone just fries being a challenger gets picked up and they're just a real deal and you know they throw this whole thing uh, out of whack all right next up season mvp it seems like uh on the coaches side that all 12 coaches did vote for this one and it's a bit of a mixed bag so simp and scrap got two votes and seven other players got one vote so that's four the seven it's actually 11 so someone didn't actually vote i mean that's not surprising because it's a, i would say that the complexity in the mvp race this year is it clearly right now is a pretty ar heavy meta but as you saw from day one if you are a sub player and you're making impactful plays on the map i think you're going to get cred in this conversation so players like simp abizi hydra um you know whether or not you want to debate this like shotzi and pred uh, players like Kismet, players, um, you know, like maybe Envoy, all these sort of top subs on top teams, I think may have an inside in this conversation, but your really good flex players like a scrap, for example, are also, I think, going to get some consideration this one. So my early favorite, I think based on uh, what I've seen in scrims in day one is I think I'm going to say Simp. I think probably Simp and Paco right now, I think may be sort of one and two early in this conversation. I think Abizi is good, but the way that Tim played in that first match for phase, like, and I've seen him play like that in scrim so far this year too. I think he's back on his BS and him and Hydra, I think are going to be dueling in this one. And I think early on, I think Sim might edge him, but we'll see kind of where we net. All right. So let's bounce around a little bit. First team to make a change. Ooh, it is an interesting one. So we got to remove teams like a Florida slash, you know, Miami and like an LAG who I think their flexibility and ability to make a change is going to be kind of limited. The teams I'm thinking about to pick between, I'm thinking... Seattle, if they struggle, Boston, if they struggle, LA Thieves, they struggle because LA Thieves have a really tricky stage, uh, to be honest. We talked about in our preseason video, video, uh, preseason preview video that their stage this, this split is really, really hard. Vegas, I think might be limited in their ability to make a change, but that hasn't stopped them in the past. They just drop people in Minnesota. I'm actually going to kind of maybe have a little bit of a hot take. I think Thieves, if they kind of bomb this stage, might be very aggressive into recruiting whoever's on the inside of the challengers conversation because I think... I, I, my sense of where Thieves is netting is that regardless of how they 
play the next first couple of stages they're probably going to be good enough to sneak into the seventh or eighth spot uh, at worst four champs and so more importantly they need to find players long term that are going to fit what they want to do as a franchise so i can see them being going back to sort of what we saw from thieves like in cold war but they're going to get very aggressive in making roster changes and i i just looking at the split that they have um i wish they had to play like every top team i i think Right now, I'm going to give them the edge in that conversation. And that's not a good edge to have, by the way. You don't want to be the first team to make a change. First on standings. I think this one's probably pretty easy. There's one team that has consistently always been in this conversation. They're the safest pick. There's going to be Atlanta phase. They're going to have some competition. Optic for all of their, you know, up and downs, not winning events last year. They were like second in the conversation. Toronto is very consistent. New York. I just think phase is always the safest pick on this. Season in, season out, they have been uh, really good at being either the one or the second seed. Uh, at the end of the year so i think that's probably the pick that i'm gonna make here last on standings uh i think that it's gonna come down in my mind to either lag or vegas and the reasons for that are i don't know if the talent this lag team is going to be good enough to battle some of these teams and for vegas i just look at that squad and i just don't see where the leadership's going to come from i see a lot of like players that might be able to go to make individual plays but i just don't see teamwork like I think that's going to handicap both squads and combo with their uphill battles early. I just think they're going to crumble. So one of those two teams, I'm going to say LAG. Teams that will win a major. Well, so this one's hard because I just think like six teams have the ability to win a major. So let me like phrase this differently. Like let me pick the team I think that's the safest bet to win a major. And that's probably FaZe. They made the most finals over the last couple of years. Again, they're like the safest pick to pick in this situation. And like I'm trying to get the most predictions right. And don't call my comments and say, oh, you're just a face fanboy or whatever. Like you would make the same decision if I'm you're in my shoes of, of not putting, you know, not sticking your neck out. No, no pun intended to uh, a scrappy on that. Like, I just think phase is probably is safe to pick for this one. And I really like uh, the squad they have this year. All right, let's bounce around. Who will win major one? The coaches have Atlanta with eight votes, Atlanta phase, Toronto with three and one abstain. I actually think the Atlanta Toronto battle in the final seems about right so i'll go with the coaches on atlanta edging that one but i could see these two teams these teams have battled so much over the years that i'm excited to see with roster changes this year them kind of do it again I, these teams have probably played like 12 or 13 times after the last couple of years and every single time you know even when toronto was going through their sort of issues i think that these matches have always been really good and then let's do the last piece cdl uh champions you know this one's interesting i want to eliminate a couple of teams from this conversation and tell you my thoughts i really like the optic team but until i see kind of how shotzi and pred can kind of work off each other and not have what we happened against new york on uh yesterday where just some boneheaded individual decisions from them really kind of lead to some issues for the team i'm not going to include them in this conversation now but i will say that i do think the optic has 100 percent has the talent to win champs 100 percent. it's just about putting the teamwork together and this might just be step one of the project i really like new york i think paco is can clearly going to pick off where he left off last season their teamwork looks really good i want to see a little bit more before i include them in this conversation and it basically to me leaves toronto and phase and i just don't know how to pick this to be honest toronto made champs last year and then you know sunday happened phase fell short against new york and even yesterday phases control looked iffy but they've always looked iffy in the first couple of games of a season like cold war they looked then against florida and then we know how that went mm, i don't know how to pick this one i'm actually going to say toronto i might get flame for that i'm gonna say toronto and phase will battle in the finals and toronto uh will win but it's man both these teams i think are kind of final both these teams just made one change and they brought in someone that's an easy plug in their system they don't have to do a lot of work to integrate that player so i just think both teams from like a teamwork and trust aspect like they've been together for enough time now that I just think they're going to just kind of sail pretty smooth this year. Yes, they'll be up and downs, but I think at the end of the season, I feel like these two squads are going to be going to be the squads and I will predict Toronto to win. We'll see how that goes. All right, that'll do it for this video. Some of y'all might, might ask me, Ben, can you make a prediction on where Otani's going to go? Bro, I don't know where Otani's going to go, man. Like, you know, listen, I love talking about esports and sports, but that's... Well, tune in later in my stream. I'll talk about that then. I uh, appreciate you all tuning in. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more. I think we'll do a Q&A video tomorrow. And then on Monday, I'll do my kind of like way too early tier list. So be on the lookout for all that content. And we'll see you guys on the next one.